Are you the youngest person in this room or the oldest? Yes. <laughs> I think it's fair to say that COVID has shone a pretty harsh light on the social care sector. It's exposed deep vulnerabilities on people who need it most. What can robotics do about this? In care homes already, we can see robots do things like clean up, decontaminate, um, help people put on socks. So these are kind of technical tasks. But robotics itself in the care sector is doing other interesting things. My name is Stevie. So I've given him suggestions and songs that Stevie might be able to sing. And that's, row, row, row your boat. You've heard that song. Then I says, and maybe we can do a duet with Stevie singing, Oh, Danny boy, and me singing the, the melody. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes. <laughs> One of the challenges in any kind of a, an elder care setting is trying to, you know, increase social interactions. In, in, in nursing homes or long-term care settings, um, you know, you don't hear laughter very much. Um, what Stevie did when we brought it into those environments was that, you know, it, it kind of brought people together. Um, and typically when you get people together and they're excited, they're likely to interact and, um, you know, the energy in the room is quite positive. So we really tried to build on that. We tried to add features where we could that would encourage um, you know, social interactions, encourage people to engage. You know, people liked the fact that it was, it was um, cute. They liked how it could, it could um, express certain types of emotions and they often found it funny. It kind of humanized the technology in a way. One of the early applications of the robot was playing bingo. N44, N4, 4. And we didn't account for the fact that the room was going to be really large and that the robot would need to project its voice to the back of the room. So there was people at the back of the room that couldn't hear the robot. And as a result, we were freaking out, but you know, we started to hear people shout up, like, you know, encouragement towards the robot. They're saying things like, you know, come on, Stevie, you know, you, you got this. Um, and and you know, we, we kind of felt that was amazing. And, you know, it, that gave us a lot of confidence. Stevie, maybe on your next visit to Knollwood, you could join us at our karaoke. I would love to. During the pandemic, um, we've been really focusing on paying attention to the residents feeling isolated and feeling lonely. We have had pets, live pets, in our facilities for years and years. When you have a live pet, they tend to connect with just one or two people. But with the robot, you know, multiple residents can use them. One of our communities has a black and orange striped tiger cub and the tiger cub is really a big hit. One of my favorite ones, there's a, a sign or a symptom that comes along with dementia often, and that's defined as repetitive motion, like picking or tapping or um, shaking a foot or even pacing around. And we had a resident who had that pretty specifically. And so instead of the tapping, she was able to take that repetitive motion and use it into stroking the cat's fur. And so she continued to stroke and stroke, and instead of increasing the agitation and the anxiety, it decreased it, and before long, she was making eye contact with the cat, and she was talking about a cat that she had had in her past, which we had never heard about before. And so it just really it goes to show that there are lots of different symptoms of dementia that these uh, robot animals can really help impact. Robotics offers us a kind of a vision, a promise of the future. Are robots here to stay in our care homes? Well, yes, but they have a big part to play in uh, providing resilience and robustness against COVID and against future issues. Hi,